A few weeks ago, I posted in the community page to our channel members asking them what they thought were some of the most common fish keeping mistakes. We got some really good suggestions. Today, I'm gonna go through what I believe are the best suggestions we got from members, as well as some of my own. If you'd like to get involved in this series, click the join button down there next to the subscribe button and join the team. Let's get on with the list. Ruth Miller says, always keep the basics in mind. One of the people I've given Opai Ula to missed on these. I think that's how you say it. Froze his shrimp, keeping the tank next to an open window overnight. Fried his second batch, placing it in direct sun to grow the Kato faster. I forgot to unplug a heater while doing a water change, cracked the glass. Fish were okay, but it was a shocking experience when I next put my hand in the tank. Yes, I absolutely agree with Ruth here, and I hope I pronounced that Opai Ula, I think is how you say it, that little red shrimp. But anyway, uh, the heater thing, I, it's definitely, I've talked about it in other videos, the thin glass heaters can definitely break if they're exposed to cool air while you're doing a water change. A simple resolution to that is either make sure the heater is cooled down before you do your water change or just take your heater off of its bracket and put it down on the substrate so it always stays submerged and that will help with that. Uh, but I definitely want to focus on keeping things basic, keeping the basics in mind. This is absolutely critical because I think there's so many people out there and I've been guilty of this in the past too, where you just spend money, you do all kinds of things, change things up, and it just overcomplicates things and tends to lead to even bigger problems where if you had just kept things simple, used the keep it simple stupid method, the KISS method, if you had just done that, things would have been much smoother, a lot less complicated, and you probably would have enjoyed this hobby a whole lot more. HEPA Aquatics says, forgetting to turn on your filter after finishing a tank maintenance. And the day after you remember and then rush to turn it on and the smell and toxicity hits the tank, panic sets in, luckily no losses, and it corrected itself. I'm sorry, that one was a little difficult to read. The type is very small, my eyes are old. Yes, this is absolutely true. And this is absolutely something that I have been guilty of in the past. And it's very easy to be guilty of this, if particularly you have a canister filter because a lot of those canister filters are so quiet, you don't even know that they're on and they're underneath your cabinet. So you don't really see anything. And it's very easy to forget to plug it back in after you're done with your maintenance. The problem that happens from this is with everything sitting stagnant in that filter, the bacteria that's in that filter can start to die off. And what happens when things die in our aquarium? It leads to ammonia. And then like HEPA Aquatics said, a day later you go in there, you plug it back in and what happens? All of that ammonia filled water shoots back into your aquarium and could potentially poison your fish. Now don't panic. After 24 hours, everything should be okay. But I've known people, not me, it was a friend of course, but I've known people to forget for several days and it's actually a huge problem when you turn that filter back on. So yeah, what I like to do now for my tanks that have canister filters is I will unplug the filter and I will pull the cord out into the room so that it's sitting as far out as possible where I'm like tripping over it when I walk by. This way I absolutely will not forget to do that. Not only does it smell bad when you turn that filter back on and all of that dead, um, uh, dead bacteria gets shot back up into the tank, but it can also kill your fish. So yes, definitely don't forget to plug your filters back in. Steve Booker says, while completing water changes, never make a coffee and sit down and relax when refilling the tank after cleaning and saying to yourself, it's fine, I won't forget. You only forget once, believe me, and you never have enough towels for the cleanup. Easily done, keep an eye out when you're filling your tank. I kind of reworded it a little bit. 
So this is another one that um, I have a friend that had this happen. Uh, and it's funny because that friend actually was doing a water change on a 240 gallon tank. And while he was refilling that tank, he sat down at a table that was directly in front of the tank and still didn't pay attention and it overflowed. But luckily that tank was in his garage and, uh, and it didn't cause too much damage. It wasn't really a huge problem. And then another friend of mine that I know that I happen to share a home with uh, did that same thing on her discus tank where she started refilling the tank and then went upstairs to cook dinner and guess what happened later? You know, I don't know these two people very well, uh, but, uh, but you know, I've, I've heard these stories before. And <laughs> anyway, it was me and it was Lisa. Everybody's done it. We've all done this. Absolutely. Pay attention. Listen, I've had this happen literally sitting next to the tank. It's so easy to have this happen. And by the time you figure it out, you've already got a ridiculous amount of water all over the place. It is absolutely a common problem. We've all done it. Some idiots like me have done it more than once, but just yeah, pay attention. There's no way really to know. There's no automatic shut off that I'm aware of. You, you just have to pay attention and make sure you don't overflow it. If it's in your garage, it's not a big deal. It's a pain to clean it up. But if it's in your living room, ouch. This next one is such a common issue that we had three different members suggest this. Candace's Aquatics started out with not knowing about the fish you want and putting them with fish they shouldn't be with. Maybe even in a tank that is too small. Then Furlow's Aquatics said, not researching the fish you're keeping. And on the other hand, overthinking this hobby. We talked about that a little earlier. And then John Williams said, mixing different species of fish without doing your research. Look, we've all been beginners at one point. You might be a beginner right now. I think that almost all fish keepers make this mistake and it's a very easy mistake to make because you go to the fish store and you see all these amazing fish and a lot of them are pretty inexpensive and you're like, I want two of those and one of those and three of those. It's very easy to do, but like these three channel members said, it is imperative that you do your research before going to the store to buy these fish. We don't all have local fish stores that are really good about making sure that you're selecting compatible fish. A lot of times they'll just bag them up and sell you whatever you want. So it is gonna be on you, expect it to be on you to know about the fish before you go to the store to buy them. This way you know that they're gonna be not only compatible with the fish that you have, but they'll also be compatible with the tank that you have. The water parameters are similar. The size is big enough, the decor, the filtration size, all of that. Do your research, know everything there is to know about your fish before you go and spend all that money and bring them home just to get eaten by your Oscar. Chad Crot says, taking advice on internet forums as fact. They can be a blessing and a curse. While you have seasoned Aquarists on these types of forums, there is a ton of misinformation or that one know-it-all. Point being, don't take all your advice from a single source. Look for corroborated info across multiple platforms. Now, I love this one. I could not agree with this one more because it's absolutely true. Listen, this is a hobby that we all develop our knowledge based on our experiences. We do things, it works for us. We do other things, it doesn't work for us. So when somebody asks us about that thing, whichever one, we're gonna say, yes, this worked, or no, that didn't work. It's based on our experience. It's not necessarily based on what the rule book says, if there even is this mystical rule book, but you understand what I'm saying. If something works for me, and then you ask me about that, I'm gonna tell you that worked for me, because it did, I'm not lying to you, it worked for me, but it might not work for you. So the absolute best thing you can do when you're looking for information, particularly online, is do not see that first article or watch that video, even if it's one of mine, 
Don't watch one video, get your information, and then make your opinion off of that. Watch multiples, get multiple points of view, get all different kinds of information from all different kinds of sources, and then you can formulate your opinion. Just force yourself to fall down that rabbit hole. It's fun, plus we're all locked in our houses, so who cares? Just spend the time that you need to get as many opinions as possible, then that can help you to make your decision. Melissa Jeswald says, this is a long one, until recently, thanks to KG and Aquarium Co-op videos slash posts, I didn't think I needed fish medications on hand, and it never occurred to me to treat all new fish as if they have a disease during the quarantine process. Also, if you wait until your fish is showing signs of disease, then order the meds online, it's probably too late for the poor fish. A list of meds to have before buying your fish would be great. This is absolutely true and this is one of the hardest things as a fish keeper to do because you're spending money and you don't have any immediate ramification for that because you're spending money thinking that you might need these products down the road. You hope you don't, but you have them just in case you do. This is absolutely true what Melissa said because when your fish does get sick, it's not going to happen at a convenient time for you. It's not going to happen when you just so happen to be going to the pet store that day anyway, so you'll pick up medications. No, it's going to happen to you when you're getting ready to leave to go to work or you're leaving to go to that wedding or whatever it is that you're going to do. That's when it happens or it happens at nine o'clock on a Sunday when all the stores are closed and you can't order online fast enough. It's true. If you have these things on hand, you're prepared for it if anything is to happen. So it's one of those things, I've said it so many times, it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. That's so true. I also, I, I understand, I get it, that it's hard. Some of these medications are expensive. You know, you might pay like 20 bucks, 15, 20 dollars for some medication and then never use it. I know that's hard, but you know what? You probably have a bottle of Advil sitting around for you. You probably have some Pepto-Bismol or some Tums sitting around just in case. We'll do the same thing for your fish. It could be a matter of life or death depending on what time that kind of thing happens. As far as a list of medications to have, I like to have antibiotics, things like urethromycin, uh, metronidazole, which would be things like Paracleanse and Maricin from Fritz, uh, also General Cure from API and urethromycin from uh, API. Those have been kind of difficult to find lately, but I also like to have aquarium salt and some type of ick medication. That pretty much has you covered for all the things that could happen down the road. And again, it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Mainly Betta says, overfeeding is a major one. Not only will it ruin your water parameters, but worse, it could lead to premature death in your fish. Yes, I think next to not cycling an aquarium properly, overfeeding is probably the biggest problem in fish keeping and probably kills a whole lot of fish out there. Uh, overfeeding is, it's, it's bad for several reasons, like mainly Betta said. It's not just the fact that your fish is gonna get fat and be bloated and it, they're gonna gorge themselves. A lot of fish will eat until they've got food hanging out of their mouth. It's not good for them, it's not good for you, it's not good for them either. So there is that, but also the more you feed, the more food doesn't get eaten and ends up sitting there rotting, making your water all funky for your fish. But also your fish keep eating it, they keep processing it, they keep pooping it, which has the same effect as that rotting food, causes ammonia, your bacteria in the tank can't handle it, everything falls apart. Yes, don't overfeed your fish, give them a little bit, let them keep going for 30 seconds, 45 seconds or so. And then when they stop aggressively going after it, you leave it alone and you're done and you feed them again the next day or whenever you're feeding your fish. 
Do you like this kind of format where I'm just kind of free forming it? I'm not really going off of a script. I don't know if that's gonna make the video be 45 minutes long, but we'll see how it goes, I guess. This next one on the list is one that I came up with, not necessarily the channel members, and that is impulse control. I stood in this exact spot except I didn't have the green screen behind me. And I did a whole video about impulse control. I'll put a link, I think it's this corner. I'll put a link I did all about that, how this is a huge fish killer and a huge money waster, the lack of impulse control that a lot of us have. Whether it's impulse to buy more fish or impulse to spend money to solve problems. Examples, I'll give you examples. You got a tank that for whatever reason, you just can't get it clear. The water is just a little bit hazy. So you buy all these chemicals, you do water changes every single day, you buy a bigger filter, you buy a UV sterilizer, you do all of these things. And in the end, if you had just left it alone and let it do its thing, you would have had to spend no money. I'm not saying every situation is resolved that way. I'm just saying this is a common thing to throw money at problems rather than making an educated decision as far as what to do to solve that problem. And then of course, the number one thing with impulse control is seeing a fish and getting tunnel vision about that fish and not thinking about anything else and buying that fish before you even know if it's a fish that's compatible with your tank. So with this hobby, you have to slow down, take a deep breath and think about the decisions that you're making before you spend a bunch of money or you buy a fish that's gonna kill all of your other fish. Control your impulses. Okay, this is another one that I came up with on my own. I can come up with common mistakes too. I don't have to get them all from channel members, but this one is the biggest no-brainer and almost every single fish keeper has been guilty of this, and that's over cleaning. I'm not gonna go through all of the science behind it, but I hear it even now. I'll get messages, I'll get emails from people saying I had this problem, so I did a thorough cleaning. I cleaned everything out, cleaned out my substrate, cleaned out the filter spotless like the day it was new. I added all of these chemicals. I went crazy with it. There's not a speck of anything in the tank. It's crystal clean. Well, that's a bigger problem than what you started with probably. Uh, over cleaning and, uh, to solve issues is so common and it has got to be one of the biggest fish killers out there. Listen, a healthy aquarium, it's gonna be a little dirty. Nobody wants to hear that, but it's true. It's not gonna be absolutely pristine. Look at nature, nothing is pristine in nature. The air isn't even pristine. So the more life your aquarium has in it, the more healthy it is. The more you see algae, even though algae is a nuisance and not many people like the way it looks, that's a sign of a healthy aquarium. Fish that are lively and happy is a sign of a healthy aquarium. Don't mess that up by cleaning it thoroughly and taking all of that beautiful life out of there. Leave it alone. Let your aquarium have a little bit of life to it and don't overclean it. Okay, my final thing on this list is going to be something that not all fish keepers are guilty of. I've been guilty of it in my time. I've been keeping fish for a very long time, but I was also in a job for many, many, many years where I was going to people's houses every single day. And I would see aquariums all the time, at least once a day, I would see aquariums in people's homes. And one very common thing that I saw was aquariums that were not taken care of. The water is this low, the filter is barely got any water coming out of it because it, the water's so low, it can't suck it up far enough. The fish are miserable. They're laying down on the bottom. There's algae everywhere. The, I saw it all the time. And why is that happening? It's not happening because the people are too busy. It's not happening because they had to work late the other day. It's happening because of laziness. If you're a lazy person, this isn't the hobby for you because this is a hobby that involves work. It's part of the deal and you have to accept that going in. You're responsible for however many lives you have in that aquarium. And that's an important responsibility. It's something that you have to be dedicated to and you have to be ready to put in the work. It's part of the deal. 
So if you're a lazy person that just wants to sit around and play video games and doesn't want to be bothered with having to do work in the tank, maybe you should pick a different hobby. I mean, I, I don't know what else to tell you. I'm not trying to be a jerk. I understand we all have busy lives. We all have things going on. But listen, fish tanks take work. I don't care what kind of a tank it is. There is no such thing as an aquarium that you never ever have to touch. I don't care if you have auto feeders and auto water changes, you still have to do work. So know that going in, don't be lazy because you are responsible for these little lives. And if they die and it's your fault because you were lazy, that makes you a bad person. I'm sorry to be that blunt, but it's true.